welcome back to the Board Game Closet. My name's Jimmy. I'm Tim. I'm Rod. And today we're going to be looking at Descent Journeys in the Dark, second edition. Tim, why don't you tell us about the instructions? All right. So this game uh, is is just like a, it's a dungeon diver game, and uh, but it's got a lot of the RPG elements into it, so it is a little bit more difficult than most games to learn to play because there is just there's so much to it, you know, with the stats of the characters and all. The, you see all these dice here um, for the combats and stuff like that. So it gets a it gets a little more difficult. So. And it didn't really have that tutorial game uh, t that most games are get are doing nowadays. You know that that first game to to really get into it. There is a first first quest, um, first encounter uh, quest, but it's it's not really set up to, as a tutorial. It's just simple quest is all it really is. Um, so it it was more difficult to get into and learn, but the game itself was not difficult. Mm -hmm. So, um, it wasn't that that hard once you get once you played a round or two of it. It's like you got the game. You're like, oh, oh okay, man. I got this. Um, so, but you will be looking back at the at the instruction booklet every now and then uh, to look at references and stuff. Uh, but it does have one of my favorite features is an index. <laughs> so it's got an index, so you can you can look up keywords, mm -hmm. and it has the reference sheet for setup. Um, and then every character gets his own uh, turn summary card, which is indispensable. Um, and then, of course, it's got a, a great quest guide, you know, for those of us that like the story and the theme and everything. So, uh, which these, these do a really good job of keeping it simple um, because instead of like other games where they like to set up the whole quest for you and, and it's just like, it's like an hour and a half of setup and then 30 <laughs> minutes of game. Right. Uh, this one keeps keeps it um, compact, so it's it tries to keep it in like a 30 minute to an hour game encounter. So your maps are smaller, and it actually calls them encounters and stuff like that. So so you can keep it more compact, mm -hmm. um, and you're not playing out like this huge quest. And then you can actually stop. You know, you can be that's my playthrough. That, that's my play for the day, and everything. And uh, and it keeps all the important rules and small paragraphs that so you can just you can keep it in mind through the whole game and there are tokens for everything um, when you lay them out so you can remember to reference the book for it um, and then this and of course it's got the the campaign map which we'll talk about a little bit later great but that's the instruction and the quest guide okay well tell us about the components uh, first thing uh, I'll talk about a little bit first is that this is version 2 so this is the second one versus version one, which I have, we have both. Um, the, the big difference between the two is um, you can, your characters have a little bit more depth to them and then also the size. So we're talking about the nurtures themselves and the map boards are smaller than they mm -hmm. were before. And understanding the cost of everything now, because this game comes packed with stuff, um, if they would have done this at the larger scale, it would have been, you know, it probably would have cost 150 bucks for the game. So what they did, they did a reasonable job of breaking down the scale to a smaller, you know, smaller scale, because the miniatures are still very high quality. Uh, the miniatures are fantastic. I mean, it's fantasy flight and fantasy flight, you know, on the most part gives us great games, and and uh, I'm very, very happy with the, like the miniatures. The dungeon itself, uh, they, they they lock up with each other that the and they have two sides to each one. You have the outside and the inside. Um, you got stuff like the doors. The, uh, you have the individual uh, character pieces, and, and again, just, you know, it's all good card stock. Uh, you have cards, there's lots of cards. You'll have cards for, you know, weapons and so on. Um, so there's a good amount to the game. Um, all pieces are, like, like I said before, very good quality, thick cardboard. Uh, again, Fantasy Flight does a fantastic job on that for us. I always think a good sign of a game that's made well is when you have a hard time putting it all back in the box, <laughs> you know? And this is one of those games where like you take it out and then you're like, how did this come out of this same box? And then you're trying to cram stuff in. And to me, that's amazing. And then with all the miniatures you get with it, where sure. you're always pulling out something new. And the first time we played it, you know, and I was like, I was going crazy when I looked in the box and I said, yeah, but look at this one. I can't wait to fight that one, you know? Yeah. So the components are really good with this game, I think. Fantastic. Oh, what would you say the size of the first edition box was? Like two to three times that, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, 
Yeah, it the, was deeper. The miniatures were longer. probably double to triple the size. Yeah. I, mean, I can remember when we, when we played it, you know, you took up a big, a good sized table just to do the smallest things. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said before, there's a couple, there's some rule changes that, that have been made that make it, to me, make it more of a group game versus the Dungeon Master, Dungeon Master, whatever you want to call it. Whereas the old one felt like it was a individual game, just so you have to all be in the same area of the dungeon against the Dungeon Master. But, mm -hmm. but that's just, you know. Sure. Anything else? So let's talk about the <laughs> gameplay, Jim. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about how you play. At the beginning of the game, each person's going to take a character. And on that character card, it's going to tell you uh, what their stats are. It's going to tell you a hero ability. So this is something special that they can do. And then a heroic feat that they can do. So uh, their hero ability might be something that they can do throughout the game. But then their heroic feat will be something that they can do one time. And so the card's kind of cool in that once you use your heroic feat, you can actually flip your card over. And then that tells you that you've done that for that encounter and you can't do that again. So each person gets a card, tells them their stats. Each person's going to have a corresponding figure that's going to go out onto the board. The dungeon master or the, um, the overseer, I guess, is going to set up the game ahead of time. And so then you're going to have a start point on the game where you're going to come in onto the board. Uh, the, um, the enemies are already going to be out on the board, so you can kind of see where they're going to be at. <clears throat> and then you take your turn. So let's walk through a turn real quickly. At the beginning of your turn, you're just going to do, um, which I love these cards that they give you, because if you forget where, where you're at in the game, you just reference the card and you know. So at the start of your turn, you're going to do any kind of ability that you can do at the beginning of a turn. Then you're going to refresh any cards that you've used throughout the your last turn. You're going to equip cards. So let's say you have extra things that maybe you picked up or you didn't have equipped yet. You're going to equip those. And then you're going to get to perform two actions. And you get to choose from attacking, searching, moving, using your special ability, resting to heal yourself up, uh, healing up somebody that's next to you, uh, opening a door, or reviving a hero. You can do all of those things, and you get to do two of those. So you could attack twice, or you can move twice, or you can move and attack. You can do all kinds of things. That's, and I'm speaking of the heroes now, so that's what they get to do. At the end of your turn, you'll flip your card over, and that's to help the overseer know who's gone. And once everybody's gone, then it's his turn. And the same kind of sequence happens with the overseer. He's going to do any of his start of turn abilities, like bringing more enemies out onto the board. He's going to be able to refresh any cards that he's used. Um, and then he's also going to draw an overlord card, which is a big deal, because that gives him more things that he can do. And he can interrupt you, he can stop you, or he can do special things. And then he's going to activate all of the monsters that are on the board. And then they get to do two actions. The only difference is the monsters can't attack twice. They can move twice, uh, but they can only attack once. And so they get to attack. And then you, re you repeat the step for all of the uh, monster groups that are on the table. So you might move all of your, you know, whatever that guy is, and then whatever <laughs> these guys are. And then they all go. And once they're all done, then he'll flip his card over, and then you start the round again. And so that's basically how it works. You're going to be moving throughout the board, trying to accomplish certain goals. So it might not always be killing off all the monsters. It might be protecting something or securing something, things like that, to accomplish the goal. And then uh, it just goes back and forth until you either all die or you accomplish the goal for the game. And so that's kind of how you play play uh, Descent. Yeah. And one of the other things I like to bring up is the back to the version 2, version 1 thing. Um, Fantasy Fight's been great about it. What they did was all their old stuff for version 1, you can buy a pack that will have all the old characters onto the <laughs> new, with the new settings and everything for them. So, you, so you'll still be able to use those characters. And even actually use the miniatures if you want. I mean, they're they are different in scale, but uh, so that's a great thing. They still supporting the old, and then the uh, then of course they're supplying us with many expansions, <laughs> which we're very, we're very happy about. <laughs> well, let's talk real quick just about the combat, uh, how the dice kind of work, because I think that's a neat aspect to the game. Is on your character card, it's going to tell you. Um, actually, dependent on what weapon you use, right, is how it's going to tell you which dice you're going to roll. So you might roll like a red and a, a blue die or something like that on your turn. And so you'll roll the dice. And um, so they've got hearts that represent uh, actually what you're trying to do at that point. So if you're trying to attack, that'll represent that. The number on the dice uh, will tell you how far your range is. 
And then uh, you've got an X that's on the blue die that means an immediate loss, you know, miss. miss. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you ever roll the X, uh, it's over, you lose. And so that's kind of a neat mechanic because you're just, really cool. yeah, because it could totally ruin you. you. You're going for something, you see that X come up and it's just all ruined. Um, and then you've also got uh, these little lightning bolt symbols that represent surges. And so uh, surges are cool because uh, each one of your cards might say that if you roll a surge, then you get to use this or a surge helps you do something extra or um, like on one of the dragons we fought you had to roll a surge to even be able to attack him and so that was neat because it wasn't just let me see if i get the number of hearts that i need but it was i've got to get surges and then oh i get to use surge for this special ability you know or i've got a surge now and it can help you do this so it was kind of neat how those surges worked uh throughout the game and so You'll roll, uh, roll your die, uh, dice, and then the defending person will roll uh, theirs. And then, depending, you can match shields for hearts and different things like that. So it's a real easy combat system because they lay it all out for you. Tell you what you get to roll and what they have to roll, and then you add it up, and, and then you figure out who wins. So Yeah, and I like that the uh, with, with the surging uh, and stuff, that all the, the monsters are actually different monsters. They're not just the same monster with a different miniature mm. you know the surges really added the the difference you know like you were talking about like for the shadow dragons the, since they're hidden in shadow you had to roll a surge to just to to be able to attack them otherwise it was an automatic miss mm -hmm. um and then other ones have uh fire breath uh, that they get to use their surges on um the spiders had poison of course right, right. you know so <laughs> that, that you could poison people for they just constantly uh takes away damage uh -huh. and stuff that, which was really cool because you had to roll for it every turn to get rid of it yeah and i did like that all the status effects had their own little cards that you could place and you, and you put them on top of your character mm -hmm. so that you remembered when it came to your turn it's like oh, oh. Well, i've got poison it's like i gotta roll this off uh -huh. um and then with the overlord he had uh he, he's got stat cards for each one of his monsters so it's a quick stat just like the heroes you know but it, it's half the size um it's it's got all the stats for the monster on it, so he's got something really quick you can look at. He doesn't have to go searching through the rule book. Let's also talk about the campaign portion. Right. So you've spent all this time learning the game and fighting the encounter and everything, and most games just reset after the quest. You know, it's like, and then you're back to the the main character you had before. Uh, in this game, you get to keep all your all your loot throughout the entire campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to keep your experience points. They have a log for it, yeah. so you can write it down. That way, when you come back to the table, you know who bought what with what, and it's even got a list of how you, which quest you go through on on the campaign. And they're in order in the quest book. And then this is really cool: the campaign map, right? So the quest tells you where you're gonna go. Well, it's labeled here on on the quest map or the campaign map. Uh, where you're going and then they have these little circles um, that are stopping points for your for the um, the questing team the questing team <laughs> the, uh, the party the party the party the group the group uh, I said <laughs> get off with his what do you call him yeah, the quarterback <laughs> uh, okay so <laughs> team uh, so so then they have to stop at each one of these locations and draw an encounter card and there's an event that corresponds with the with the symbol on here. It could be good or bad. Um, you could destroy the Overlord's guards um, <laughs> or take wounds, you know, based on some encounter that you have um, on these little things. And I thought that was great because then the heroes could come into an encounter and they're coming in hurt or they're coming in with a, you know, bonus of some sort uh, mm -hmm. just because of the travel ahead to the quest. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, because it adds another in-between. Like you said, you're not just resetting and here's the new scenario, but it's let's see what happens in between. And right. this could be good or bad. You know? Well, uh, do you want to talk about, uh, we'll give our review and then uh, talk about it. So at the end of our reviews, we always like to give a one-die review, whether that be green, which means go buy this game right now. We love it. White means I don't know if I'd buy it, but I'd definitely play it. And then red means uh, don't buy it, and I wouldn't even play it if someone offered. So that's our three uh, choices. So we're going to give you a one die review here and yeah. put it out and show. Oh, oh I didn't <laughs> expect that. It's a yeah. white one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's always somebody, isn't there? <laughs> well, I'll explain in a minute. So. Okay, so tell us why you gave it a green die. Okay, so. 
Uh, for me, this, this hits all the right spots. It's got theme, it's got story, um, it's got, got great combat mechanics. It is a little bit difficult to get into at first, and it does take the Overlord uh, more time than everybody else to just set up, you know, the set up the map and, and everything, and to pick out his little stuff. You know, while the heroes, you know, all they have to do is go to the merchant and buy something. You it know, takes you longer. It just takes the Overlord longer. But other than that, I mean, that's really the only negative I got. It's a nice, quick dungeon del delve game that that actually gives you that RPG um, progression exactly. throughout the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I gave it a white <laughs> because for a couple reasons. Um, I I really thought about this and I thought, well, I should give this a green because I really did enjoy the game. This is my first time playing a game of this style, I guess. I mean, I played Legends of Andor and I liked it, but I mean, this is different than that, you know. So. This is my first game, and I actually really enjoyed it. It was one of the first games that I was like, I'm really excited to have my little character and build him up and keep going and see what I could do and where, where else is this going to take us. But I gave it a white for a couple reasons. One is because he, he owns it, and he owns like every expansion known to man. Um, Don't tell anybody. Why is that a negative? I'm well, it's, it's a negative because I said green means go buy it. And so, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not going to go buy it because I'm going to play it with you guys. And I don't know, like... Um, I, I don't know. Maybe that's not a complete. Maybe I should have given it a green. I don't know. But um, I did really enjoy the game, uh, and I think I would. But, I mean, it doesn't fit me completely. It's not like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I, but. No, I understand. I mean, so sometimes the, um, I guess maybe the theme itself isn't one you wouldn't bring home, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I, I, on the other hand, green, green, <laughs> green, green. It would be all three greens for me. Now, I love, you know, D&D. So I love this. I love the dungeon. It gives me the theme. It gives me the story. And I mean, and I tell I want more of these type of games out there. So mm -hmm. go out and buy it. <laughs> Every one of you. Support them. Support them. Support your local hobby shop. But, uh, but definitely, I mean, the game is well done. I mean, it's, it's hard to find a lot of negatives. I mean, the, the only negatives, like you were saying, is at times, you know, you kind of forget a rule here, forget a mm -hmm. rule there. But all in all, it's really good. It's simple enough I mean it's not as difficult as Dungeons and Dragons anyway um, but uh, you know simple enough and it's it makes you feel like you're, you are in a campaign you are trying mm -hmm. to get more stuff because that's the fun part of doing RPGs right it's, can I get the next thing can I get the better <laughs> weapon can I get the better yeah. suit of armor <laughs> and this is giving it to us well I mean I just remembered why another reason why I'd give it a white is just because and this is just for my playing style but I'm more of a co-op style uh, game, especially like with this. The thing that I loved about Legends is we all got to work together, and like I don't know, it's just me, and this is my opinion. But like I don't really care for the whole idea of like beating down Tim, you know, every time because you know he's gonna want to be the Overlord or the Overseer or whatever. And so I don't know. Just at the no, end of the game, I walk I away, that. especially after two or three games. If we win every time, my question is, did you enjoy? Losing all day long, Tim. Well, hold on a second. <laughs> As I recall, that particular day, I did not lose every single time. Well, you won the you won the in between campaign that didn't really matter anyway. Oh. So, um, <laughs> but that but that's my that's I guess that would be my issue with it, and that's just but that's just the style of the game, and so that's why I would never give it a red. I'm just saying let's notch it down a little bit to me because if I could find a co-op game that had this same style of everything that this had, I'd say green all the way. So. And the one thing also by doing that, it requires at least two people, but realistically it requires three people. So you need somebody to play the, the DM, basically, and, yeah. you, and you need the two. You need two other players. I mean, you, you could do one other guy, but he control four or five other guys. You know. Yeah, so. but and what if you don't have a guy that wants to be the right. over, overseer or somebody that doesn't right. want to be? Like I wouldn't want to be that guy. You know, yeah. I always want to be the good guy, the hero trying to win the game. I don't want to be the other guy. And so. see, with Andor, the difference would be the fact is that Andor you can play by yourself. Yeah, you could. Yeah. So just like Mice and Mystics. But yep. again. <laughs> <laughs> My Mystics doesn't have a good theme, <laughs> but uh, but the uh, but again for me this is a green all the way. Go out and buy it. Go buy Andor also. But go buy. I mean buy this. This is a very very good game. Yeah, if, if you if you're used to being a GM or a DM or anything like that, then the Overlord part isn't going to be any even an issue with you, right? Um, because you're just used to. Um, Playing it out. I mean, you don't have to make it like just cut, throw, kill the kill the players. You know, you can have it and just play it out. You know, right. a little flavor to your exactly. game. Exactly. Well, great. 
Okay, well, that's our review of Descent Journeys in the Dark, second edition. We've got a lot more reviews online. Check them out. And you can also visit us on our website, BoardGameCloset.com. And we're on Facebook and Twitter. And as always, support your local hobby shop.